Hello, good evening. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank um, everybody for coming tonight. And it's really nice to see a lot of familiar faces, including the speakers, but also in the audience. Um, but I also wanted um, to uh, welcome our global and virtual audience tonight, both in Barcelona uh, and in Canada and in other places um, of the world. And I am sorry, but I need to do a mini interlude. I also need to say hello, Daniel, my son, uh, who's watching as well. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I wanted to thank very much Vic Vicky Habermill for helping me to set up this event. Um, yeah, she's been indispensable to keep me calm. But also Jordan Rowe and Claire Melouish from the Urban Lab who made this event um, possible. So thank you for this. Right, so today's event has been sparked uh, by a British Academy Fellowship that I received um, to research and promote the ways in which time and diverse temporal aspects underpin the planning, the implementation, but also uh, the experience of urban regeneration. The aim of tonight's symposium is to bring together leading academics, leading urban practitioners and community groups to discuss and reflect why it is important to situate time and temporality at the forefront of uh, the research agenda for urban change. So it might be also useful to highlight that different terms are used to talk about time. Time um, as chronological continuum or as historical time, for example, words like temporality to refer to the different qualitative types of time, as well as concepts such as rhythm, timescape, tempo, to mention just a few. Part of the aim of today's presentation is to examine how such terms are used and understood by uh, the different participants and how different conceptions of time inform urban change. So to pin some of these maybe more abstract thoughts down, I thought what better cities to focus upon in Europe than London and Barcelona. I don't know if many of you know that this year has marked 30 years since Barcelona was nominated Olympic City. Since then, Barcelona has been heralded as a model for post-industrial urban regeneration across the world and has greatly influenced British planning since it's mentioned by the Urban Task Force report in 1999. However, as one of our speakers, uh, Maripaz Balibrea tonight has noted, rather than a model, it was a confluence of particular historical factors within a very specific space and time um, that led to Barcelona's particular type of social democratic planning. And whether such an approach is still sustainable is hotly debated at the moment in Barcelona. London has also witnessed, as so many cities across the globe, a radical transformation of its skyline and streetscapes in the last 20 years. Some of it labelled as very successful, other aspects have been increasingly questioned. Partly, London's urban um, reinvention has been sparked by its new role as financial centre in the 1990s, and we will see how the latest changes in British politics will affect London's built environment in coming years. So we can see already how the timings of global events, but also administrative and political timeframes influence the tempos of global investment, democratic planning and urban redevelopment, which are really shaping the way cities are built, transform and change. So just a few more thoughts um, on, um, on why a focus of time, on time and temporality in urban change is important before I introduce, introduce tonight's speakers. In my previous research, Sensing Cities, I examined how in an era of um, urban catwalking, cities, where, um, cities are comp uh, competing globally for attention, for, uh, for attention by tourists and investors alike. Urban regeneration, I claimed, is made effective and challenged through the creation of new experiential landscapes that aim to foster exciting sensory experiences in and of the city. However, it became quickly clear to me that I had forgotten a crucial sense in you know, my great framework, and it, that was the sense of time, which, as Mike Racco, who is speaking tonight, has highlighted, frames the timing of regeneration projects, their delivery, and how they're received by locals. 
So as David Harvey reminds us, and of course he's drawing on Marx here, space and time lie at the center of discussions of urban change. Both frame and shape urban capitalist society. The making of urban space is in many ways a materialization of uh, the passing of time. However, most uh, research on urban regeneration has tended to focus on how spatial transformations affect the socioeconomic restructuring of cities. The temporal aspects such as the restructuring, um, and the temporal aspects of such restructuring have largely been implied. And maybe this is because time as opposed to space is much less tangible as Barbara Adams, the sociologist, reminds us. Um, we tend to experience time through other aspects of life, through what she calls technologies, for example, that serve as indicators of time, such as calendars, clocks, um, activities such as scheduled events that structure our lives and experiences of places. Time is also expressed and mediated through a series of cultural discourses that can be conveyed either through personal narratives and accounts or framed through institutions such as local councils um, or set out in policy documents. As tonight's speaker Simone a Abram um, will tell us by looking at planning documents and discourses. So time is both a socio-technical institution imposed upon the individual while simultaneously being an embodied and very much lived experience that we become, a, of, that we become aware of through a range of symptoms, such as sensory changes, as for example, the transformation of the built environment, day and night, but also smells and other senses which indicate the passing of time. To highlight all these multiple layers, and there were lots more to, in today's work, uh, workshop earlier on that came up, and temporal dynamics that uh, converge and conflict in urban redevelopment schemes, I decided to draw on Barbara Adams' concept of timescape for tonight's talk um, to, and, and the event to really draw out these diverse temporal layers that come together in the city and show how different understandings of time uh, interact in the construction of landscape, both tangible phenomena like the actual built environment, people's practices, but also broader intangible time frames like political, social or financial envi or environmental processes. So the aim of tonight's event is to expose time and temporal relations as a crucial factor in shaping the construction of urban space and its experience. So what I will ho hope will come out from bringing together academics and urban practitioners such as Bob Allais, Carmen Gualvia and Ewan Mills is to gain not just a historical and temporal evaluation of London and Barcelona's recent urban regeneration, but also examine how the politics of time are played out in practice when restructuring the city. And just one last remark I really wanted to make and while I hope that tonight will open up all kind of discussions and I see it as a starting point really to think about the multiple diverse temporalities which are embedded in planning, architecture, citizenship, everyday experience, I think it's also important to remind ourselves that a focus on time is, is, is extremely important in current times. In our current political situation, it is ever more important to maintain our historical memory, to be wary of discourses that have resounding similarities to happenings in the past, and which need to be challenged not just by urban centers, but by every one of us. So in collaboration with the British Academy, with Brunel University, the Urban Lab at UCL, and the Urban Salon, we've brought together, I think, six exceptional speakers to discuss these issues. Each speaker will talk for approximately 10 minutes and um, we will have then a discussion at the end drawing all of the talks together.